Hi, I'm Mick Cislak. I'm a research associate in the Department of Computer Science at the University of Calgary and in the Plant Phenotyping and Imaging Research Center at the University of Saskatchewan. Over the last decade, a number of automated image-based methods have been developed to help extract plant traits in phenomic studies, including data acquired by drones in the field. This has led to the collections of vast amounts of data, and although getting these images and data is complicated, interpreting them is a bigger challenge. For example, in screening a larger number of plants for desirable traits, which has in turn led to the development of image-based phenotyping platforms across different scales, from organs and tissues to fields of crops. For this talk, I'm focusing on shoot phenotyping of canola plants grown in controlled environments, for which we have a large data set of 300 plants from 50 Braskinapis genotypes grown in a greenhouse at a Lamnatech high throughput phenotyping facility. These eight images show how some of the data looks like for a single plant shown in days after seeding, but there's a large phenotypic variation in shoot architecture across the whole data set, including plant height and branching angle, plant posture, and physiological age. These are simple observations that can be made just by looking at the images, but are also examples of traits that image processing pipelines are not designed to extract because they are not functions of the image pixels, but are more semantic, like organ count, plant's physiological age, if a plant is stressed, or a plant's potential yield. These traits normally have to be identified by a human expert, but recently, machine learning has been applied plant phenotyping to automate the process. In this example, a neural network breaks down an input image into nodes and assesses what is in the image. Here the task is to classify if the plant is healthy or stressed. Initially, the weights are arbitrary, but after feeding in images with the known answer, the weights are adjusted so that the network returns with high propensity the known answer. As an example, I've set the weights in the hidden middle layer of nodes to show how the network might arrive at an answer. In practice, however, neural networks require large amounts of annotated data for training, from tens of thousands to many millions of annotations depending on the task. These are time consuming to produce because humans must label data on the images or draw bounding boxes around objects manually. Moreover, existing image data sets used for plant phenotyping are relatively small. For example, a publicly available data set for leaf counting in Arabidopsis rosettes has 160 annotated images. The data sets can also be expensive to obtain, requiring large facilities to grow and photograph the plants. There may be additional issues in annotating plant development, for example, in tracking organs over time where it is easy to make mistakes. In this amazed data set, the first leaf was labeled in early stages of the plant's development, but was missed in a later stage. One common approach to data augmentation is to apply transformations like flipping, cropping, and distortions to the annotated image data. This augmentation, however, is still limited by the size of the original data set and any errors it contains. With Jordan Ovens and Ian Stavnis, we showed that images of synthetic plants can also be used to generate training data for a leaf counting task. The advantage is that annotations are part of the model. We know how many leaves are in the synthetic images because they were generated by a computer model. We also showed that the neural network performed better at a counting task when we augmented the training with synthetic data sets. The model, however, was a simple one simulating the development of an Arabidopsis rosette, but it was a proof, proof of concept. Now we want to apply the same idea to canola. So we constructed a developmental L-system-based computer model that simulates growth of a plant from seeding to rosette, bolting, flowering, and potting stages. The image sequence shown here is of a synthetic plant that was constructed on the basis of descriptions available in the literature, 
including from the Canola Council of Canada, and also discussions with canola breeders like Sally Vale from Ag Canada. The question then becomes how do we calibrate our model to the various phenotypes in our Lamnatech dataset? We need to answer questions like where are the buds and other organs located? How are they arranged with respect to their parent branch? Which buds will produce new growth? In what direction? And will it be vegetative or reproductive? And finally, how fast do organs grow and what is their final size? One possibility is to measure the shoot architecture by hand using digital calipers or a hand digitizer. In collaboration with Marcus Samuel and his students from the University of Calgary, we measure the size of internodes, leaves, flowers, pods, and branching angles over time in a couple of wild type plants and a mutant phenotype. Then we translated the measurements to a developmental computer model using L systems. Measuring all of the canola phenotypes in our data set, however, would be a staggering task and pro probably would take as long as annotating the data set itself. Instead, to create calibrated models quickly, we use L system based models with positional information and visual calibration. This method was originally proposed for cr creating plant models in computer graphics. Starting with a reference image and a generic model, we use the plant axis as a reference to express lengths of leaflets as a function of their position along this axis, resulting in different lengths of leaflets based on their position. We treat other parameters the same way and arrive at the final model that resembles the given image. We used and extended this method to calibrate a model of canola. Now I will show a demo of the calibration process. The user performs calibration in the context of multiple views of a single plant, in particular, a front view, a side view, and a top view, as well as a combined view in 3D. The calibration is initialized by dividing the main stem into vegetative and reproductive sections. Yellow shows the vegetative section and blue the reproductive section. A slider is used to change the size of the sections to better match the image. Higher order branches can be enabled and the user can control the branching structure such as the distribution of lengths. The user can also change the branching angles. Then the user can enable visualization of leaves and calibrate their sizes. The user can also adjust the leaf inclination angles Flowers and pods can also be enabled and calibrated in a similar way. After I suppress the background images, we can see the final calibrated model. This is a calibration for one phenotype, but we can apply the same technique for other phenotypes. This one has short branches with broad branching angles, whereas this other phenotype has long branches with narrow branching angles. Finally, the third phenotype has mostly straight branches. For the same genotype, we can also calibrate the model to changes in growing conditions, for example, control versus water stress plants. I've, I've demonstrated that our canola model can be calibrated to canola plants with contrasting architectures. The calibration can also be performed for multiple stages of a canola plant's development by setting the parameters that affect timing of development like elongation rates of internodes or the rate of appearance of new organs. Now I will show a demo of the second part of the calibration process. The user is presented with a series of images of a plant's development. And the user is also shown a model calibrated in the previously discussed static case. By manipulating controls as before, the user can adjust different rates. For example, the user can set the overall growth rate.
or slow down leaf growth. Or set the time of transition from flowering to potting. and set the growth rate of branches. This interactive calibration process continues until the user is satisfied with the result. Then the model can be used to generate synthetic data, like this time-lapse simulation of a plant as seen from the side and top. Simulation can be automatically labeled, for example, by placing circles around the tips of branches and counting how many branches there are of different orders. Similar annotations can be made for leaves or pods. So far, this presentation has focused on isolated plants. The model can also be used to simulate field-grown canola from early stages of growth to later stages. However, simulating many plants growing together requires including different aspects controlling the plant's development. For example, with collisions ignored, the leaves and branches will grow through each other. To illustrate the point more clearly, I used a red box to highlight a case where two leaves have grown through each other. And zooming in, we can see that the leaf labeled A has grown through the leaf labeled B in the area indicated by a red arrow. Overall, these types of intersections give a false impression of the canopy architecture and could produce bad training data. For this reason, we combine position-based dynamics and L systems, simulate collision detection and resolution, resolution algorithmically. This is important from a visual perspective so that plant organs don't intersect. Zooming in again shows that the leaves no longer intersect. Other interactions between plants can also be considered including the light environment, for example, the red to far red ratio, and genetic and hormonal control of branching, for which we have developed models in the past in different contexts. Then different synthetic phenotypes can be used to help study the architecture of the canopy by examining the spatial and te temporal arrangement of the organs, the time of flowering and the control of branching, and their effects on plant growth. In summary, the focus of our work is on generating annotated data for training neural networks in image-based phenotyping tasks, specifically for identifying semantic traits in images. To this end, we have developed a method for the visual calibration of models to images using L systems with time-varying positional information, which is a fast and effective way to generate such ground truth data. The next step in this work is to apply the images of synthetic plants to train a neural network to extract phenotypic traits from our canola dataset. We have good results for a leaf counting task trained on synthetic images, and we are working on inflorescent branch counting. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk. Also, my colleagues at the University of Calgary, Dr. Pushinkevich, the head of our lab, Dr. Ferraro, who is maintaining and enhancing the virtual laboratory software, which I demoed in this talk, and Andrew Owens, a PhD student in our lab, who implemented the collision detection and resolution algorithm. Also, I'd like to thank our collaborators from the University of Saskatchewan and AgriFood Canada and the funding agencies for their support. Thank you for your time.